Hey, this is Leo for Actualized.org, and in this video, I want to share with you a concept that maybe you haven't thought about before. And this is the idea, if you're doing personal development and you really want to get to that self-actualized point that I keep droning on and on about, what you really need to do to get this to that point is you need to develop a greater sensitivity to what your mind and your body is telling you. So I'm going to give you a few examples so I can really illustrate what I mean by this and what it really means to develop what I call a palette for life, a better palette for life. So when I started biohacking, which I got into a few years ago, I started that because I heard Dave Asprey, the Bulletproof exec, he gave a presentation at the 21 convention um, a few years ago in August. And I was really fascinated because he started talking about biohacking, this idea that you can start to get better performance from your mind and from your body by doing things like exercising in certain ways, uh, playing around and testing your nutrition, and then looking at various supplements and other basically life hacks that you can add into your life and into your routine to get more performance out of your body. And so I started to play around with this, I got really excited about it. And I was doing biohacking for a while and I still love to do that. But one of the biggest things I learned from his Bulletproof diet, and you can go to bulletproofexec.com and see more about what, uh, what Dave Asprey is about, but I really got on track, I studied a lot of that stuff, got really involved with that, and then branched out into other diets and looking into other uh, biohacks. But what I learned from that whole process, I think, is not so much the specific diet, which I actually kind of backed off of, but what I learned is looking at him as an example of how he does biohacking and how other biohackers work, is that they have a very a keen sense of awareness about what's happening to themselves, right? Because there's really two ways to get feedback. One way is objective way. For example, you can get an EEG machine, electroencephalogram, attach it to your brain, and you can literally sit and do conscious thought or do meditation and see it graphed out on a computer monitor and then you can see what's actually happening. That gives you feedback which allows you to quickly learn and adapt and to get better results. We kind of want the same thing but we want it in your, in your mind to be happening when you're doing personal development. What I've realized over the years is that our palette for life has really been blown out by culture and the media. And I'm going to get into that in a second. But just to wrap up my story with the biohacking and the Bulletproof diet, what I learned from Dave Asprey is that he's very sensitive. I don't know if he's just sensitive biologically or whatever, but when you listen to him and you listen to some of the ways that he does biohacking, like he's very sensitive, for example, to presence of mold. Presence of mold, like he'll talk about an example where he's walking down the subway and he can literally smell the mold and he sees that the mold has a negative effect on his cognitive performance. Personally, I can't get, I don't have that sensitivity to mold, so it's hard for me to get that same kind of effect going. I don't know what it is about him. But what I've noticed is that biohackers have to be sensitive because you take a supplement, right? Let's say you take some fish oil or you take some other kind of supplement. You take some vitamin C, you take this, you take that, and maybe you're experimenting with your diet. And what's important if you're trying to get better results is to notice the effect. Because when you try something out and it's something that hasn't been really scientifically validated, it's something a little bit on the edge, in the gray zone of whether we know that it works or doesn't, and whether it works for you, you have to have a sensitivity to whether it's working and the effect that it has. And a lot of these things, the problem with them is that they're very subtle. Me, for example, when I started taking a lot of supplements and I got into supplement experimentation, right now I'm taking like 50 different supplements every day. But one of the challenges I had is that I was taking this stuff, but I wasn't really feeling it in my body. I wasn't feeling the effect. So I was kind of just going off of uh, theories that I was reading online, studies, research, but I wasn't really feeling it. And some of these biohackers claim that they have uh, developed better awareness so that when you put your attention on these things, you feel a little bit more. And I've been noticing in myself that this is something that you can develop. It's like a, a sixth sense. It's developing a better palate. And it's about taking that supplement and then seeing. Seeing what is the subtle effect. And a lot of times that effect can be very, very subtle. What is the subtle effect that it has on your workout? Does it give you a little bit more juice, a little bit more energy when you're working out? Does it make your joints less achy? Does, does it make you recover better? Does it grow your muscles faster? Right? Noticing these very slight changes. Does it make you less prone to colds? Does it make your colds last uh, long, shorter 
or does it reduce the severity of them? So kind of noticing these things, or maybe when you're working and you're doing something creative, noticing the effect of a brain supplement. Another thing that I got into was nootropics, which is taking supplements to enhance brain performance and creativity. And there, it's also subtle because a lot of times you'll take these various supplements like ginkgo and huperzine and, uh, and other ones like that, and you're not quite sure if it has an effect. And so you have to sometimes put, your real, uh, put a lot of attention on it and try to develop a bit of an awareness as to whether this thing is working or not. And maybe it's working in a negative way. Maybe it's working in a positive way. How much? So developing this sense. Because when you have that kind of sense, it's much easier to do biohacking. And I see personal development as kind of a form of biohacking. It's more like mind hacking. It's trying to get better performance in your life, trying to create a more fulfilling life for yourself, trying to create more success by using various psychological techniques and understanding yourself better. And so what I think you need to develop if you're really trying to become self-actualized is more of a subtlety in how you evaluate the different things that you're putting in place into your life. For example, what is the effect of meditation on your, the quality of your life? Do you know? Have you actually tried it out? And if you do try it out, you know, it's a subtle effect. When you first sit down and start doing meditation for 20 minutes every day, it's not that long, 20 minutes, but it's still pretty tough to get through that. What is the effect of that if you do that for a couple of weeks? What is the effect of it if you do it for a month, two months? Those effects can be quite subtle, and a lot of people, because their palates have been blown out by media and by society and by expectations, unrealistic expectations, what they do is they kind of miss those subtle effects. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this blowing out of the palate in a second. But let me continue on. So meditation is one example. You know, supplements, if you're taking supplements, that's basically a form of biohacking. Um, looking at the effects that that can have. What about food, though? What about your diet? Do you notice the effects of diet? Do you notice, for example, if you wake up in the morning and you have a high carbohydrate, uh, high sugar diet, like maybe you eat a bowl of cereal or you eat a candy bar or a protein bar, do you notice how that impacts your first few hours of performance at work? Do you notice that? Do you notice maybe that there's an influence on your mood? Does it impact your, uh, your, your tendency for depression? Does it make you more anxious? Does it make you happier? Do you get a... Uh, a sugar high that you can work off of really hard, but then it kind of crashes. You know, what are the effects? And I'm not saying that it, it's necessarily all negative. There could be positive effects, negative effects. I don't know. The question is, are you aware of those? Are you looking for them? Right? And the other one, of course, is media. Like, things like television, internet, gossip, tabloids, the news. What effect does that have on your consciousness? I think it has a really profound effect but it can also be quite subtle. And there's a bit of a paradox there in that these things can be subtle, yet they can still have big effects, right? Because if you're always watching TV, if you're always watching commercials, and you're hanging around negative friends, and you're eating low quality food, and you have these negative habits in place, you're not taking care of your body, what's happening is that all of that is actually producing a big effect in your life. It's actually dragging your life down. It's dragging your consciousness down. It's making you underperform, really. And then you don't know why you're unfulfilled. But the effect of that can be subtle because it all adds up. Subtly, all these little things add up and they produce a big effect. There's a bit of a paradox there, but not really. Because if you think about it, it's kind of like that, that old example of boiling a frog, right? If you take a frog, supposedly, and you put him in a boiling hot, cauldron of water, he's going to immediately jump out if it's already boiling and you just put him in there because he's going to notice and he's going to be very sensitive to the difference. The difference between where he's at right now, room temperature, and uh, you know, 150 degrees boiling water or, or whatever temperature it's at, the difference there is going to be huge and so he's going to, he's going to jump out immediately. But if you put him into lukewarm water and then you slowly crank up the heat over a span of 30 minutes, then, so the story goes, that frog is going to boil. He's not even going to jump out, even though the temperature is rising, is rising, is rising. And eventually, it's going to raise to that same 150 degrees. He's not going to notice it because it was subtle. It wasn't that dramatic. And that's kind of what's happening here. That's kind of what happens when you go down this negative downward spiral, as I call it, of, for example, feeding your consciousness, your mind, with 
low-grade information. So if you're watching a lot of reality TV, if you're looking at a lot of gossip on the internet, if you're following celebrity news, if you're following politics and all the, all the negative stuff that goes on there, if you're fighting, following war stories and all the negative stories in the news, if you're doing that, then it's slowly, you don't even notice the effect, it slowly just kind of takes you lower and lower and lower. And what actually happens is that the effect in your life though is pretty big because you're not able to live up to your dreams. You're not able to live that creative kind of life. You're not able to go out there and achieve as much. And so you're just living a comfortable kind of life and you're just settling and you're finding it difficult and you're finding yourself frustrated and unsatisfied. And you're not quite sure why that is. And I'll tell you why that is. It's because you've had these subtle influences and you're not really sensitive to them. I'll tell you one thing, I cut out TV about three years ago. I don't watch TV uh, anymore, especially cable TV. I don't have cable. And one of the things that I'm really sensitive to now that I didn't realize before, because I used to watch TV basically since, uh, since childhood, up through until three years ago. And so I was kind of immersed in that. I was like a fish in water and I didn't notice the water. And one thing that I didn't notice was the advertising, right? And people talk about advertising being pernicious and advertising having this influence on us. And I never got that until I weeded myself off of cable TV and I totally took myself out of advertising. I don't look at advertising on, on the internet. I don't look at advertising on television. And so now when I do very rarely see advertising, I'm very, very sensitive to it. And it's very powerful. It's like a whoa, like this big hit. For example, I'm at the gym and sometimes I even try not to look at the TV monitors at the gym because I just don't want that influence. But sometimes I'll kind of like watch the news and I'll just read the, the captioning or I'll just read like the headline of the story. And I just notice the, like the negative effect of the news. I just see it. And it's like, whoa, that's powerful. I didn't notice that before because I was so immersed in it. Or I look at an advertising commercial and I just see this commercial for something, for a movie, for some product, for some service. And I'm like, whoa, like that's such a strong influence. It's having such a strong influence. You don't even realize it until you're off of it. The same thing goes, for example, with food. If you've played around with your diet, if you've done any dieting, if you've cleaned up your diet, if you've gone through that process, you also notice just how bad mainstream food is and how horrible of an influence it has on you. And yet at the same time, you also realize that when you were immersed in that, when that was your reality and you didn't know any better, then that was it for you. And you felt like that was totally normal and that you didn't realize the, the way that it was draining your energy, the way it was making you sleepy, the way it was making you achy, the way it was making you inflamed etc. Like one thing that I notice right now after being on paleo for a long time is I, I, I really reduced my carbohydrate intake for, uh, for about six months and I didn't eat any sugar really or even any like uh, whole carbohydrates. So I was like up to under 50 grams of carbs per day which is really low but I kept that up um, just to see what kind of influence it had on my, uh, on my body fat and interestingly enough what I notice now is when I go out and I eat at uh, like I'll get you know I'll get a coffee at a Starbucks or I'll get a like um, I'll get a salad at some eat out place and I don't eat out anymore I usually make all my own food when I go buy food that's made for like mainstream Americans what I notice is just how much sugar is laden into everything even like some frappuccino at Starbucks, I sip on that I remember I was just sipping on my girlfriend's frappuccino just took a little sip of it and it was like Bam, just this hit of sugar. And I'm like, that was just one little sip. That was like a tablespoon of Frappuccino. And this is a large cup, like two or three cups of this sugar laden Frappuccino. I'm like, damn, like, think about that. That's sugar. And most people that are drinking that because they drink it every day or they drink it every week, they just get so accustomed to it, they don't even notice it. Same thing, even with a salad, you eat a salad and you, take a vinaigrette dressing that they put on it, like some raspberry vinaigrette dressing. Like I was eating a salad at Denny's and I noticed like, damn, this salad dressing has a ton of sugar in it. You can just taste it. And you don't notice that unless you kind of go through that process of cleaning yourself up. And so that's what I'm talking about here is that some of these things are subtle and it's very easy for your body and your mind to get acclimated to them, but then they can still have a big net result on your life, right? If you're eating that sugary salad dressing, even though it's a salad, it's got all that sugar in it, that's making you fat, that's making you inflamed, that's causing you health problems. If you're eating those frappuccinos, there's like nothing nutritious in them at all. So 
same thing goes there, right? And if you're watching a lot of television, reality shows, stuff that's low consciousness, that's putting you in that kind of mode. So you want to be more sensitive to this stuff because what's happening is that you're being boiled alive right now. We do kind of live in, uh, in a negative environment and we also live in a very low consciousness environment. And that's not the kind of environment that's conducive to self-actualization or living a really charged, powerful life. So one thing to take away from this I'm going to tell you is, of course, look at your diet and look at what you're feeding your consciousness. It's really, really important. So why is this happening? I think one of the problems is, is that media does have a big influence and that when we grow up, what happens is that our palate gets blown out. And the best example I have of this, and the reason I say palate, is because I think about wine tasting. Uh, I took a wine tasting course, and by no means I'm a horrible wine taster. I don't even like wine. But I took a wine tasting course, and one of the things that shocked me about wine tasting is that people can develop their palates so much that they can sense so much more than I would sense if I just drank a glass of wine right now. And in fact, the instructor that I was learning from, this was a teaching company class uh, about wine tasting, and I was learning from this instructor, and she was like one of the top um, master wine tasters in the country. And these people, they have to go through a very rigorous training process to develop their palate so they can identify all the subtle little flavors and smells within wine to the point where they get so good that for their final test, and she was telling me, uh, me about this, is for their final test, what they do is they give them like 30 glasses of wine that are unlabeled. And this wine taster for the, this tester is going to go through and taste each one. And they have to be so good that they can identify not only what part of the world it's from, they have to identify what country it's from, and not just the country, but which region of the country it's from. So not only is this from Europe and from France, but this is some Bordeaux that's from, you know, west of the Rhine or whatever the details might be of that example. But like to me that just blew my mind because when I taste this wine, I had a hard time. I remember buying a couple of different just varieties. I bought like a, uh, uh, a Cabernet and a Sauvignon, right? And then like a Pinot. And I had a hard time even distinguishing those three, which to an experienced even a moderately experienced taster would be like a no-brainer. But since I never drink wine, for me, it was really challenging and it was really frustrating because people would be drinking this wine and they'd be talking about all these subtle things. And to me, it's like all I get is this big hit of alcohol because I don't even drink alcohol. So for me, even the alcohol is very overwhelming. But then I also get this bitterness and this sourness. And then that like just like my palate doesn't handle it. It hasn't developed. I, my brain literally hasn't wired itself to be sensitive enough to taste and smell those different things. So my palate is underdeveloped. So I think part of the reason is that we have underdeveloped palates as we're growing up in this culture that we grew up in. Because what's happening is that the media and everything else is telling us that we should be expecting climax after climax after climax. We should be expecting kind of a lot for a little in life, right? And that's kind of like, well, you go to, to your job, and at your job, you get a huge paycheck. You don't have to put in a lot of work. You get a huge paycheck. And when you go to a movie, it should be an awesome movie that just thrills you and blasts you. And it's kind of like a Hollywood blockbuster movie, right? It's these kinds of things. And when, like, when, you eat a, when you eat a burger with some fries, like the fries need to be all greasy. The burger needs to be juicy with a bunch of bacon in it and bold flavors like barbecue sauce and hot sauce and mayo and, and just like overwhelming flavor, right? Like we want to be overwhelmed as a culture and we want to be like wowed and like bam, 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 bold, strong, exciting. And that's all well and good, but the problem is that when you do get too much of that, you start to lose sensitivity to those subtle things in life. For example, I had this with, uh, with hot sauce. I love hot sauce, especially Cholula. And what I would do is for a long time, I would douse all my food with Cholula all the time, especially like breakfast food. And then I started transitioning, not only dousing my breakfast food, but I would douse lunch and dinner, just food, food, food with hot sauce. And what happened was that literally I was blowing out my palate because all I could taste was this hot sauce. It was so bold that I liked it. But on the other hand, when I started getting into cooking and I started watching shows like Top Chef and learning about the nuances of cooking and the different flavor combinations you could have, my palate was blown out because I was so tempted to just douse hot sauce on everything. 
But that's not good when you're trying to learn to cook because there you want the subtle flavors. You want to have dis uh, a sense of distinction between different spices like black pepper and white pepper and pink pepper and some of the other flavors that you can put in there like cumin and and some cinnamon and some clove and all this other stuff. So you can create these rich and complex dishes. But what happens when you create this subtle, rich, complex dish and you hand it someone, to someone and then they pour half a bottle of Cholula over it and they scoff it down? What happens? Are they really appreciating the nuances and the subtlety that's in that dish? No, right? And that's literally what's happening with mainstream, I think, life. That's what happens if you're living kind of the ordinary mediocre life in America is that you are very much overwhelmed by the, the media. You're overwhelmed by the movies that are out there. You're overwhelmed by the commercials. You're overwhelmed by what people are telling you that you should expect out of life. And you know what? You're missing kind of the more subtle aspects of life. For example, when you do wean yourself off of that dirty American diet and you put yourself on a clean diet, then you become much more sensitive to things like sugar and fat, and you become very sensitive to the effect that has on your mental performance and the, your physical performance and how you look. You become very sensitive to that stuff. And then all of a sudden, you get a deeper appreciation. You build nuances, you build distinctions, you basically build up a mental palette for food. And then the same thing can happen when you're doing self-actualization work and you're doing personal development work. For example, with meditation or with things like journaling, techniques like journaling or doing affirmations or visualizations. If you take a normal person who's kind of gone down that, that low consciousness spiral and he's in a low consciousness state and you tell him, you know what, why don't you meditate for 20 minutes every day and then after that do 10 minutes of journaling and then do 10 minutes of affirmations and then do 10 minutes of visualizations. So all in all, that's like, an hour of work that you're going to do, um, these different techniques, and then see the effect that this has on your life. For the first few weeks that he does that, if he even gets that far, which most people never will, because they're so low conscious, they can't even ha their mind can't even handle that. But let's say he goes and he tries that out. What's going to happen, he's not even going to notice the effect that this is having. It's not going to be strong enough because his, his mind has been blown out by the culture, by the media that's out there. He's been overstimulated. And so now he's not even sensitive to this stuff. He's not gonna be sensitive to it. And you give him some supplements, he's not gonna be sensitive to that. And you clean up his diet for a week or two, and he's not even gonna be sensitive to that. He's gonna say, well, uh, it's not a big deal. I can still go back to eating the, the garbage that I was eating at before. But when you put him on that for a couple of months and you really wean him off of it, he starts to develop the appreciation that's necessary to really get those things to be sustainable in your life, right? You need some time to develop uh, an appreciation for what journaling can do in your life and the effect that it can have. Because at first it's subtle, but then it also accumulates. And the subtlety, it incrementally builds up to something really large and something really profound. And the same thing with meditation. And the same thing with uh, reading books. And the same thing with taking supplements. Same thing with cleaning up your diet and going to the gym and eliminating negative thinking, right? A lot of the things that we are not aware of is the thoughts and emotions that we're having day to day and how that's influencing the trajectory of our lives. And the reason that people do not reach that self-actualized state is because they're always anxious, they're worrying, they're stressed, they're not realizing how their thoughts and how their consciousness is shaping their life and their reality. They think that life just kind of rolls along and that they get a lucky break here, they get a lucky break there, sometimes they're able to, to make something happen, sometimes they're not. But really what's happening is that their thoughts are influencing them on such a profound level. It's a subtle level, but it's also a very big level that they're missing out on all the gains that could be made there. So then what I tend to notice is that you go into self-development, you read a book and you read about this technique and then you see it and you try it and you're like, well, I didn't really get much from it. That's why because you haven't developed the appreciation and the palate. And I think this point can be even broadened out even deeper and even larger is that people are stopping and are not appreciating the beauty of what life is and what reality is. They're like disconnected from it because they get hooked on something like easy stimulation, easy source of stimulation. Like they get hooked on television. And then when you watch a, 
uh, you know, like a blockbuster movie in the comfort of your house, eating, uh, eating a, a bag of uh, oily, salty popcorn, and you've got all these, this bold stimulation, right? The flavor of the popcorn in your mouth, and then the awesome movie before you, and the, ama the amazing special effects, and you've got the 3D sound system, and you've got this awesome lazy chair that you're sitting in, and you've got your cold, uh, sugary Coke with nice ice in it, and maybe you've got a nice warm blanket around you, and maybe you're sitting there with your spouse or your girlfriend or whatever, and you're enjoying this, this very comfortable, this very easy life, right? And when you're enjoying that, it's very hard then to say to that person, okay, why don't you just go and sit in a corner, uh, close your eyes and meditate for 20 minutes. What do you think they're gonna pick? Right? It's a no-brainer. No one's going to want to go to meditate because meditation is a subtle, is a subtle, uh, it's like a subtle pleasure. It's not this bold, overwhelming sense of like, damn, awesome, this is awesome. It doesn't feel that way, even though sometimes you can get those moments. It's like a cleaner level of pleasure that you get. It's a, it's a different type of pleasure. It's the same different type of pleasure that you get when you're tasting a good glass of wine or you're eating a fine dish and it's not overblown with sugar and salt and hot sauce and barbecue sauce, right? It's that same, it's that same difference. And the same thing goes for when you tell that person to go and to create a career for themselves or to find a life calling. At first they might say, well, you know, I have to put in all this work and this work is so hard, it's so challenging, I just want like the end result. And George Leonard talks about this in his book Mastery is that culture has really kind of hooked on, hooked us on this idea of, uh, of looking for the climax all the time. Commercials will, will promise us the magic pill, right? The get rich quick solution to whatever kind of problem that you have. But there's, there's like a subtlety to life that is being missed out there. It's that mastery process because when you're in that mastery process, you're going through and you're being diligent about it. And yeah, there's hard work. And yeah, it's not exciting. It's not as exciting as, uh, as playing a video game or maybe going to a party or taking some drugs or eating uh, a greasy hamburger or watching an awesome movie. It's not that level of excitement, but there's a certain level of excitement which you can make a case is even more profound and more rewarding and ultimately more fulfilling when you're, for example, going through this mastery process of mastering your career, or when you're doing meditation, or when you're doing some journaling, or when you're doing visualization. There's like pleasure there that I feel is really, really underrated and most people are missing out on because of the low consciousness, high consciousness difference. Most people are just stuck in too low of a consciousness to experience those higher consciousness feelings and they're not pursuing high consciousness values. There's low consciousness values like immediate gratification of pleasure, you know, eating a, a nice meal, uh, maybe taking a hit of a drug, watching some television or like kicking ass at work and getting, uh, getting some congratulations from your boss or something like that or earning some, earning an extra bonus uh, on top of your paycheck. Like those are low consciousness values and you can pursue those and there's nothing wrong with a certain amount of that. But I think too much of it gets you stuck in that low consciousness state and then eventually you get frustrated because you know you're not living up to your self-actualized state, to your higher values. And higher values are things like pursuing beauty and appreciating beauty and pursuing truth and justice and excellence, you know, these things. And these, when you tell someone to pursue those and to pursue calmness and peacefulness and excellence and beauty in their life, they're going to laugh at you if they're in a low conscious state because uh, comparing those two values, like these are ethereal, very subtle values. These are really bold, in your face, immediate values. And so when you're hooked on those, you want that, that immediate hit. But what you can do is you can retrain yourself to get hooked on those higher values. And that is just amazing when you do that. When you start to make that transition, you slowly, uh, and go through the process of weaning yourself off of the low consciousness values and putting yourself towards pursuing the high consciousness values, your life becomes so fulfilling. That's when you start re reaching that self-actualized state and you start living that kind of like really exciting, rewarding, like deeply fulfilling life that makes you happy, not just in the short term, but in the long term. 
and you're always optimistic and you're always, uh, you're learning more, you're living on your edge and that's just like an amazing feeling that I want for you. This is a feeling that I want for myself and I'm always trying to see where I can get more of that feeling in my life. But the larger point that I wanted to expand this out to is that really people are missing out on the beauty of life, right? It's kind of like we have all this stimulation and we're so numb to it that when we walk outside and we just see a tree or we see the sun, not even a sunset, just the sun out in the sky, or we see the stars, or we see, uh, we see a car on the street, or we, see, we look into someone's face as we're, uh, as we're buying something at the store, right? We're not really appreciating kind of the uniqueness of life. That same feeling that you had when you were a kid and all this stuff was new and fresh, you were very sensitive to it and you took a certain joy in it just being in it, being in reality right now, just looking at this monitor right now, looking at this video right now, how amazing is it that we have this technology that you can look at it like there's light coming into your eyes, all this stuff is working, all this stuff is beautiful. You don't need some special beautiful sunset to see beauty, there's beauty everywhere. You can pick up a leaf and like examine it really closely and just take a look at the structure of the leaf and the veins in that leaf and you can see the little specks of dirt on it, maybe there's a little insect on it, and there's a little smudge and just the color of that leaf, the way it feels, the texture of it, the way it smells. And you can just look at that leaf and you can see the beauty in it. But how many of us stop and do that on a daily basis? I know I don't, I don't do nearly enough of that, but I wanna do more of it because that is where you get real enjoyment of life because when you're getting yourself overstimulated by these bold sensations, by these bold flavors, you can never get enough. And eventually what it does is it makes you a slug. It makes you a slug because what you want to do is you just want to kind of sit back and you want to be spoon fed really the best of the best. You want to be spoon fed the best of the best of the sensations in the world. And what happens is that eventually it's like you get hooked on drugs. It's literally like shooting yourself with heroin every day. What happens is that if you do that for a long enough time, then the pleasures that we normally would like, like eating a nice piece of food, um, or even watching a TV show that is typically pleasurable or uh, not to even mention those higher pleasures like watching a nice sunset or uh, having sex, any of that, like all of that pales in comparison because you're so numb from the heroin that now like what is going to beat that heroin? Nothing. And all you want is you want more of that heroin. That's literally what you're doing except on a more subtle level when you hook yourself on TV and low consciousness media and low quality food and negative thinking, you're blowing out your palate and you're not being sensitive. And it's almost impossible to do personal development from that state. So my prescription here is I want you to be really aware of this, first of all. I want you to start becoming more sensitive to everything that's happening in your life. So for example, when you wake up in the morning and you wake up 15 minutes late and you hit that snooze button five times, I want you to now be more aware of the effect that has on your consciousness and on the rest of your day. It might be a strong effect, it might be a subtle one. Because so what's gonna happen is you're 15 minutes late, but not only are you late in reality, like there's 15 minutes of time that maybe now you have to scramble, you're not doing the stuff you need to be doing before you get to work, but it's also, what is the effect on your mind, on your brain? Does it make you more stressed? Does it make you more panicky? Does it all of a sudden trigger a chain of negative thoughts to start rolling in your mind? Does it kill that sense of peace that you like to have? Does it make you less fulfilled or more fulfilled in life? I want you to start asking these questions and just start noticing what that one little activity does throughout your day. How does that, and then connect that chain of reasoning, connect it. You know, if you have a string of those days and if you have a whole year like that, what is that gonna do to your whole year? And then what is that gonna do to your whole life if your whole life is lived like that? You're waking up 15 minutes late and hitting the snooze button three times in a row. And then that's just one example. There's so many different areas in your life where you can do this, right? What is the effect of the lunch that you have? What effect does that have? What about the, the habitual thoughts that you have? What about the thoughts you have in the shower when you're in the shower? Are you thinking about how bad your relationship is? Are you thinking about how bad it's going to be to get into work and, uh, and, and talk to your boss about the new project that you're working on? Uh, are you thinking about your bills and how you're going to pay them and struggling with those? What is the effect of that? What is that effect on your success and what is the effect on your ultimate fulfillment in life? 
right? Start getting sensitive. And the best way to start getting sensitive is to find the sources that are overstimulating, that are blowing out your palate, and eliminate them. So right now, sit down and identify at least three sources in your life that are putting you in a low consciousness state, that are honoring low consciousness values that you could potentially eliminate and raise yourself up and clean up your palate a little bit. So what might that be? Television, cable news, uh, internet news, internet uh, browsing and internet gossip, celebrity news, tabloids, negative friends that you might be hanging out with, the food that you're eating, the things that you're failing to do in your life, like the positive habits that you're failing to stay on, on top of, any kind of drugs that you're taking, any kind of addictive behaviors that you have. Consider all those and find the three, find three that are blowing out your palate right now. And what I want you to do is I want you to commit to eliminating those. Because what you're going to notice is that if you make an honest commitment and you really cut those out, let's say you cut out TV, you cut out alcohol, and maybe you cut out the worst of the worst food. So maybe you cut down on soda or sugary drinks, juices and sodas. You cut all that out. Do that for a month and just notice after a month, and it still might be a subtle shift, but you, if you stay sensitive, you can start to notice the effect that this has. And what it's going to do, it's going it's to make you go up that high consciousness spiral. It's going to put you in a better position to be more sensitive and appreciative of the complexity and the subtle beauty of life. And it's going to also make you happier and it's going to make you more successful and be in a position where you can perform much better. But ultimately what I want for you is to use this just as an example. Because this is one example. I don't want you to just do this once. This is a philosophy that you're taking towards life. Is that you're expanding your sensitivity and you're making a conscious choice to suppress the, the stuff that is honoring the low consciousness values and to elevate the stuff that's on honoring the high consciousness values. This is what you have to do to get self-actualized. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. Go ahead and comment. I want to hear what you, what you think about this topic. Also, like it, share it, link to it. Spread it around your friends. I want this content to spread around because it's free. That's why I make it free. And then, of course, go to actualize.org for more videos just like this one. All right, this is Leo signing off.